Welcome caregivers. In this particular video, we'll be covering the unit number one of module number four, that is handling emergency situations. Dear caregivers, my name is Dr. Manoj Kumavat, and today we'll be covering the theory learning outcomes and we'll understand the practical learning outcomes related to this particular unit. In order to understand this, we need to go through the theory learning outcomes which are as follows. First one is differentiating between issues which requires first aid or medical intervention. As we have seen in different emergency situations, we need to clearly distinct between our interventions and we need to also understand that at which place a medical intervention is required. The second theory learning outcome which we'll cover in this unit is about identifying symptoms of an illness, injury and apply requisite first aid. The third theory learning outcome will be about handling the trauma after emergency situations. You need to also go through the practical learning outcomes related to this unit which covers listing down the helpline numbers and emergency contact details. Apart from it, a demonstration is also required to different emergency situations. Now caregivers, let's start with understanding about differentiation between issues which require first aid interventions or medical interventions. Caregivers, it is very common that you will face the kind of emergency situations with elderly people. It doesn't matter how much care that you are taking or how much experience that you have, emergency situations are part and parcel of your daily working. And you also need to understand that in first aid situations, our aim is to stabilize the person's condition and in critical condition or where we require clinical or medical intervention, it focuses on medical assessment, diagnosis and treatment. So let's start with first category of situations in which our intervention is required and those conditions are related to first aid. The first condition could be of minor cuts and scraps and you require to clean the wound, apply an antiseptic on it and cover it with a sterile pressing. Make sure that in your day to day working, you prepare a first aid box having all these necessary details into it. The second condition could be of bruises and swelling. In this condition, you have to apply a cold compress to reduce swelling and provide pain relief to the injured. The third condition could be of minor burns. The first aid to be done in this condition is about cooling the burn with running water, covering it with a sterile dressing and administering over-the-counter pain relief if necessary. The fourth condition could be of mild allergic reactions. Allergy is a common thing which can happen to anybody but we need to take care especially in case of elderly. And the first aid intervention here could be of administering the prescribed medicine to the elderly and to monitor the improvements after administering the medication. The next condition could be of mild dehydration. The first aid that you need to do in this case is to encourage fluid intake, provide electrolyte solutions which are there and then again monitoring is an essential part of it. The next condition could be of mild respiratory issues. Particularly in cold seasons, or in seasons where there is windy environment is there, you need to make sure that you carry the kit if they have any respiratory related issues like asthma or allergy. 
Now you need to assist them in terms of prescribed inhalers, ensuring that the comfortable environment is there and encouraging slow breathing. The next category in which first aid is required is about mild injuries from falls. Make sure that you do the assessment of the injury, keeping the person still and provide a comfortable sitting or resting place and in case if medical attention is required, you need to move it to the medical intervention. Now caregivers, while giving first aid, you need to make sure that you follow certain principles. These principles are first one that you have to stay calm and composed, making sure that you focus on the situation well. Second situation is about calling for help. In case if there is a situation which can't be handled by yourself, particularly serious situations, you have to make sure that you have to call emergency services immediately. The third condition is about do not harming the person, particularly if you don't know what to do in that situation, make sure that you don't do any actions which you are not sure of. Because without knowing the consequences, you may worsen the situation. So make sure that you do not harm if you don't know what to do and you have to directly call to the emergency services. The next principle that you need to make sure is about providing comfort to the person who has got a serious condition. The next one and the last one that we need to understand in first aid is about knowing the medications. You must understand the kind of medication to be administered in conditions where allergies are there, respiratory symptoms are there and you need to also understand the precautions or the kind of uh, regulations given by the medical experts to you. Now caregivers, Let's see what are the conditions in which clinical interventions are required. The first condition is of chest pain or heart related symptoms. Making sure that if you observe this condition, then you call the emergency services for suspected heart issue. The second issue comes in terms of severe respiratory distress. And if you see that person is not in position to take the breath, make sure that you go for medical attention. The next category is of serious falls or injuries, which can result into uncontrolled bleeding. And you also need to consider the signs of stroke and these strokes could be at physical level or mental level. So make sure that you understand the situation and you reach for emergency help. The next conditions are as follows, which covers loss of consciousness or seizures. The another condition could be of severe allergic reactions. It also covers that there could be sudden change in the physical state or mental state of that individual. There could be some situations where there is a sudden change in mental status, particularly for the elders who are facing challenges on related to mental issues. There could be next cases of profound dehydration or malnutrition and there could be some cases in which even after applying the ointments in giving the pain Colors, if there is persistent pain or discomfort, you must go and consult with the healthcare professional. Now caregivers, let's see how to identify the symptoms of an illness or injury and to make sure that we are prepared for any emergency situation that may arise. 
caregivers our observation is the most important tool that we have to use for elderly people you have to monitor their daily working you have to also monitor their changes in behavior that is the first observation that you have to make look for sudden changes in mood confusion or irritability and note any change in cognitive function or memory which is happening if this is your first observation then you should be ready for the upcoming emergency the second observation that you have to make is on physical appearance observe for signs of paleness sweating or discoloration in skin you have to also look at swelling or bruising which may indicate any injury because there could be some situations in which the elderly person might have encountered any injury which were not communicated to you so make sure that you take care of the physical appearance and you observe it very closely the third observation that we need to make is about vital signs in today's world there are many small equipments simple equipments which take care of the vital signs of elderly and which could be administered by common individual like oxygen meter the diabetes uh, indicator that we do have so you have to monitor the breathing rate heart rate and body temperature along with these two parameters and in case of abnormal vital signs you can signal the distress before it changes into the medical condition or serious medical conditions so having an observations related to behavior physical appearance and vital signs will indicate you and will save you from going through a painful emergency situations now caregivers suppose if you have encountered an emergency situation then in that case there is trauma or distress which comes to the elderly because of that situations and you need to understand how to handle that trauma after that emergency situations after going through a trauma you have to make sure that the person feel safe so first point is that you have to ensure safety of that person second is that you have to stay calm and reassure the person the third part is about accessing the emotional well-being of that individual the fourth is about encouraging communication you have to listen actively and validate their emotions without judgment the fifth one is about normalizing the reactions the sixth one is about maintaining a routine elderly caregivers this is an important point because after emergency situations along with the prescription of the medical expert you have to make sure that you continue the routine and by continuing the routine you will be reassuring and helping in recovery process you have to also encourage professional support any kind of therapy or counseling is required for mental health support then you should encourage the professional support the eighth one is about connecting with support networks ninth one is about monitoring for signs related to post traumatic stress disorder which is known as ptsd for example the ptsd symptoms could be of persistent anxiety nightmares or flashbacks in this case you have to seek professional help and along with that you have to also educate the elderly about coping strategies like breathing exercise mindfulness or engaging them in enjoyable activities in all these situations caregivers make sure that you are patient you not only address the physical health of the individual but you also foster a sense of control in them you have to monitor their activities 
and the symptoms that you had seen in particular condition and ultimately the most important point that comes here after going through an emergency situation is about self-care for yourself. Caregivers should prioritize their own well-being to be a better equipped in terms of supporting others. Now caregivers, after understanding the first aid, medical interventions, observations that we need to take care and handling the post emergency trauma, we need to understand and we need to note down the most important part that is that you have to consult with a healthcare professional or a physical therapist after every critical situation or even if you feel that critical situation needs an expert or doctor advice, you have to go for it rather than handling situation on your own. So caregivers in this unit, we have covered the theory learning outcomes. In terms of practical learning outcomes, you have to list down the emergency mobile or telephone numbers. Along with it, you have to also prepare a checklist for first aid box. And then you have to go through the basic exercises of first aid. That's all for this unit. Thank you.